Uh, I'm starting a new project. This one's going to be major. Um, this particular video is just going to be a history behind this bike. Uh, it is an 86 Softail. My neighbor purchased it, oh, I think four years ago now. Um, person brought it here on a truck, well, on a trailer for him to have a look at to see if he wanted it. Uh, bike wouldn't start, but he bought it anyway. Um, initially, we, I had a look at it for him. Um, had some fuel connection problems, had some wiring issues. Uh, got it working half decently the first year, but he didn't really drive it. We just picked at it. Um, that spring I had told him to wait until I had a chance to test drive the bike. Um, but I dragged my feet a little bit and he hopped on the bike and went for a drive and it was backfiring and farting and missing and banging. And so he only got about three blocks and it quit. Brought in another mechanic, found some small issues. Um, the cross hose between the two tank halves had some plugs in it uh, where somebody had peeled a bit of the rubber sticking it on. Um, there were some issues with feed to the carburetor, wasn't getting enough fuel. Um, so he fixed all of that, got the bike running half decent. Gentleman went for a ride again, I heard him coming back, I could hear the motor knocking a block away um, through a wrist pin. So, now the original engine was the Evo, had Edelbrock heads on it, um, it had the same carburetor as what we have here now, uh, which is the stock Harley. Nothing else really overly great about it, it has uh, Vance and Hines uh, long shots on it. Other than that, uh, some fancy uh, brake um, cylinder and that, uh, but nothing out of the ordinary. Anyway, to get back to the engine, took it to the Harley dealer. Harley dealer put in a new piston, put on a new jug, put it back together, got it running. Uh, he got about five miles on it, threw another wrist pin, same cylinder. Took it back to the dealer, dealer replaced it, um, did the same job, piston, jug, put her back together, got it back, lasted a few days, maybe a week, threw another wrist pin. Now I got the story later on that the dealer had told him they did not want to put the Edelbrock heads back on because they didn't know enough about the higher compression and the heads. They wanted to put stock heads on it. He initially said, no, I want the engine the way it is. So, they put it together, as I said, with everything the way it was. Kept throwing a wrist pin. The third time they said, nope, we're not doing it again. There's something wrong with this motor. We can't get it. So, we're not doing any more warranty. You'll have to get someone else to work on it. Um, he pulled it out of there, uh, found a deal on a RevTech 110. So we bought the RevTech 110, brought it in, then he brought me back in on it to change the motor. In the meantime, I had done a bunch of wiring. Um, I think I still have photos of it. I'll stick some in the video to show you the wiring we did on it. Wiring was a mess, amateur, just horrible work. Um, anyway, got the engine in, got it all hooked up. Actually, you know what? I'm ahead of myself. First time the dealer put it in. He got it back, um, got about 10 miles on it when it started pumping oil out through the valve cover vents. Um, called me, went and looked at it, 
started it up, was running fine, no oil coming out, but there was a lot of oil where you could see it did come out. So I said, we'll start on the way home, I'll follow you, see how far we get. Well, we didn't get out of the parking lot, started pumping oil out the, valve, out the rocker covers again. So I had it towed home this time, tow truck, brought it home for him, um, came over, checked oil pressure, had oil pressure, um, but was still pumping oil out the valve cover. Um, pulled the cover off of the oil pump, pump was running. Uh, and when you turned it over, the pump was turning, pulled the pump off, the scavenge gears were shattered. They were in pieces inside the oil pump case. So no RevTech dealers within 500 miles of here. We called RevTech, um, got it worked out with them. They were good to work with us. Um, since I'm an automotive machinist by trade, they accepted the fact that I have a an idea of what I'm doing. So we packed up the motor, sent it to the dealer in Pennsylvania where it was bought. They sent it back to RevTech in California. RevTech overhauled the motor, found that the um, rocker or clip came off, went down into the scavenge and shattered the gear. We had the engine back in about two weeks. They ran it for 24 hours on their dyno, or bench tested it, however. Um, put it in, engine ran well. But there were other issues with the bike, and we, the starter went, and then the battery wasn't enough, and it and actually ended up dying. So this is the third year now, and he still hasn't gotten more than two weeks on the bike. Engine doesn't have 500 miles on it. Brand new motor. Got it running beautifully the uh, fourth year, which was last year, last summer. He got most of the summer out of it. I did not didn't do a lot of driving. Probably put another three, four hundred on it, just around town and out to the country and back. Uh, coming down the road here, coming home just about three blocks away, lady pulled out of a store in front of him. He went down the side of her car, dropped the bike obviously, scratched it up. I'll show you a few places, just minor, minor damage to the bike other than, of course, when it fell, throttle went wide open. He doesn't know how long it was running like that. Um, I went up and picked it up. The bike would turn over but wouldn't start. So I, it was on a bit of a hill, so I coasted it back to here. We got it in the garage. Uh, no oil pressure. Pulled the cover off of the oil pump. Um, oil pump is not turning. So we had no oil pressure. Um, Something wrong with the oil pump again. Uh, so that's where we are now. Engine's coming out of the bike. Um, there's no way we can claim warranty on this one uh, because the fact it was dropped, it's going to be pretty obvious to whoever takes the engine apart that it's not a warranty failure. So that's what we're going to do now. Uh, I'm going to pull the engine out of the frame. I'm going to start um, probably at the oil pump, but to get to that, you've got to take a lot of the motor apart as with a Harley uh, because the cam is under under pressure, and to pull the pump, you got to pull the cam cover. So spring pressure on the cam is liable to bend it or break it. We don't want that. This bike, basically, we finally got it running right and it tried to kill him. <laughs> so, I told him, let the friggin' insurance company have it. It's jinxed, but he wants to keep it. He's got so much into it. Um, they obviously wouldn't cover the amount he's got into the bike because it is an 86. 
soft tail. Doesn't have a high resale and wasn't insured for a replacement value. It was insured for uh, the bike's value, which on an 86 soft tail, probably around 9,000, they'd give you uh, because of the extra stuff. They were nice and bumped it up a little bit, but still nowhere near the money he's got into it now with all the work I've done and the new motor and paying the dealer for the original repairs and just too much into it. So anyway, um, that's where we are now. Uh, I'm going to start pulling it apart in the next day or so. I'm going to try to video all the stages as we go through it. Uh, hopefully you'll follow. Get your buddies to follow if it's interesting. Um, if nothing else, we'll find out what's going on. So here we have the soft tail all back together finally. Move the starter relay to under the seat from between the tanks. Tidied up around the coil. It has an aftermarket ignition system that came with the uh, twin um, the RevTech. It's a uh, twin tech ignition system with coil. Nice riding bike, one of the few Harleys I've ever ridden that I actually enjoy riding. Nice ride, comfortable riding position. Even with the rigidly mounted engine, not overly rough. And it has decompressors. So on with them. On with the choke. Be a little too much.